It seems only a little while since the arrival of the passengers at London Airport, but already the baggage is being safely loaded aboard the aircraft, Italy bound. It's okay for takeoff, and we're away in search of relaxation. We journey from the Adriatic coast and motor inland, less than an hour's drive through rich farm country. You see the towering crag in the background which rises 2,500 feet suddenly out of the plain. Well, that's the smallest republic in the world. I know what you're thinking. Italy is a republic anyway, so what's the story? Well, the story is that this miniature state is a republic in its own right within the Republic of Italy. We've nearly arrived at the high rocks surmounted by three medieval towers, the Republic of San Marino. Our visitor travels across the bridge that divides Italy and San Marino, and there she's greeted by a friend. The trip to the passport office isn't strictly necessary, but if you have the time and would like an official stamp of the San Marino government on your passport, well, drop in. It. It'll please the officials anyway. Picturesquely uniformed soldiers march continuous guard across the bridge. I say, one of them must have known we were coming. He's wearing his Sunday spats. A look at the sheer height of the rock and the three ruined castles perched not unlike a heavy medieval crown and we know that we've reached our journey's end. Having driven up to the main gate of the city, our visitor is told by the officer controlling the traffic to park the car, because no vehicles of any description are allowed within the city, which was built on ancient Monte Titano. Law and order within the city are maintained by the army and police. In their decorative brocade, gleaming gold epaulets and plumed helmets, they make striking figures in the main square in front of the governor's palace. from the ancient bell tower above the palace, it's time to enter the governor's chamber. This is a dedication to St. Marinus, the founder of the state.
There are two governors in San Marino, and they're elected twice yearly. One represents this proud little state, and the other, the Republic of Italy. This sanctum is reserved especially for the San Marinese who wish to discuss their problems personally with the governors. Each case is handled with sympathy and understanding, as befits the saying above the entrance which runs, those with kind hearts will listen. Also in the palace is the Council of Ministers, of which there are 12. By the wall is a 16th century painting pointed out by the official guide to of the visitors who daily throng this small and compact republic. In this chamber, the ministers make the laws according to an oath taken at the time of the election that the best laws are made in the spirit of liberty. This is an original Lanfranca painting of the founder, Saint Marinus. Back to the open air sunshine and the crowds. Let's pay a visit to the Palazzo Cesta. When its days as a palace were over, it became a prison. And now, it's merely a ruin. This unforgettable scene shows the variety of landscape. To the southwest, the Tuscan Apennines. To the northeast, the blue stretch of the Adriatic. To the southeast, the Marsh Apennines, and to the north, the Eugenii Hills. And if you remember a friend to whom you wish to send a card, well, there's no time like the present. Uh, what shall we say? Something unusual, I think. I know, having a wonderful time, wish you were here. Today is the birthday of San Marino, and the early festivities start with the balistrieri, or archery display. The archers line up in their original 13th century costumes. You'll notice the crossbow is being used. And it's fascinating to reflect that these very weapons were used in past ages in defense of the citadel. The target is in the shape of a man, and a bullseye is center of forehead. This gives way to whining and dining. Later, maybe a little window shopping for souvenirs, which of course there are many. San Marino is a compact city with narrow, cobbled streets, curio shops and outdoor cafes. There's also a small ceramic industry, which provides some wonderful examples in variety of design and color, as this workshop displays. The factory itself provides work for anyone with an artistic inclination. Be it firing the earthenware jars, or painting a vase made to the artist's own design. As this was Olympic year, many of the stamps had the Olympic sport designs. And if there's still someone you'd forgotten to send a card to, well, why not now? 
You have a choice of some 40 different stamps. It's been a tiring day, so how about a nice cup of tea? If you wish for something more substantial, how about a meal at a really picturesque restaurant, the Taverna del Canello, run by Signor Paolo, who personally serves you with his delicious specialities. You marry this wonderful meal with either red or white wine. Or why not both? Another helping, sir? How can one refuse? San Marino is celebrating today the 1,655th anniversary of its founding. The festivities include a mass in the cathedral followed by a procession carrying the golden covered and crowned skull of the saint, Saint Marinus, the original founder. From the most trustworthy dates of ancient legends, it's been established that about the year 300 AD, a Dalmatian stone cutter named Marinus, a native of the Isle of Arby, took refuge on this Monte Titano in order to flee persecution of the Roman emperors. At that time, Monte Titano was nothing but forest and gullies and the refuge of wild beasts. There, with a few followers of the Christian faith, including Leo, his companion, he gave himself to the exercise of his faith and art without let or hindrance. Years later, Marinus and his companion in exile separated, and Leo went to another nearby rock which is named after him, the Rock of St. Leo. We'll go there later on, in time for the Grape Harvest Festival. The procession is now returning to the church to place the holy skull back in its sanctuary. In the meantime, in his garden, Commendator Fattori, aged 94, 
is brought news regarding the holy procession. This elderly statesman, resting in his favorite chair, his mind full with memories, is the only living governor whose name in letters of red and gold is among those on the wall of the Chamber of Governors. No, not a governess. It's our own Queen Victoria. And here are the names of every governor of San Marino from the year 1452 to 1900, set down for posterity. The holy procession now over, the people take to dancing at the Nido di Palco. Not only in celebration of this holy day, but, well, maybe because they like dancing. Oh, look, Mum, there's a camera. Across to the other rock of San Leo, where the grape harvest is in full swing. No babysitters here. As soon as you can toddle, you lend a hand. Or is it a mouth? The wine of this little rock is famous all along the Adriatic coast. It's made out of these luscious red grapes. Yes, if there are any left by the time this youngster's had his fill. Now there's dancing to celebrate the bumper crop. Overshadowing these festivities is the famous castle where they say the mad Duke Cagliostro was imprisoned. Back on the rock of San Marino, we pay a visit to the new contemporary building housing the modern art exhibition. San Marino is not content to live purely on its past traditions. Young artists yearly exhibit their work here. And art lovers, not only from Rome, but all over the world, come to purchase. Or to stake a claim on a future 
Michelangelo? Oh, who knows? But it's time for our visitor to say arrivederci to her host. With farewell gifts of flowers, wines, and ceramics which jingle happily, she takes the steep road out of San Marino and onto foreign soil. It's been a time of enchantment and happiness in this wonderful community of San Marino. But soon, much too soon, we find ourselves back home. Invigorated by our too brief holiday, but with the knowledge that very soon we'll pay another visit to our hospitable hosts on the rock. The invincible Republic of San Marino, where no one goes to war and no one pays income tax. <laughs>